China has officially launched its Beidou 3 global navigation satellite system, and this marks the formal opening of the system for global users. Beidou 3 will now join GPS, GLONASA, and Galileo in providing services worldwide. So, what functions will Beidou serve, both within and outside China? And how will it aid China's space program? And with the U.S. talking of a new space race, how can China promote space cooperation rather than conflict? To talk more about these issues, I'm now joined by Dr. Yang Yuguang of the China Aerospace Science and Industry Cooperation and Andy Mock, Senior Research Fellow at the Center for China and Globalization. Professor Bernard Foeng, Senior Scientist at the European Space Agency and Director of the International Lunar Exploration Working Group, Euromoon Mars. And finally, Dr. Guo Jing, researcher at the Global Navigation Satellite Systems Research Center at Wuhan University. That is our topic. This is Dialogue. I'm Li Qiuyuan. All right, let's talk more about this. Why don't we start from Dr. Yang? I know you've been working extensively on China's space programs. So talk to us more about it. The Beidou 3 system has now officially been launched one month after this after the final satellite was put into orbit, but what was happening in that time before it could be formally opened to global users? Well, you see that uh, we've already have uh, users outside China since we developed the uh, Beidou 2 uh, navigation system. You see, uh, this is because after the Beidou 1 testing system, uh, which used a different principle uh, comparing with the Beidou 2 and Beidou 3 from the Beidou uh, two uh, generation, we will we adopted the similar principle like the GPS, uh, GLONASS, or the Galileo system from other countries. Uh, it uses uh, so-called a uh, passive uh, uh, principle, which means that the satellite only uh, send its signals about the position, the velocity, and the accurate time, and the receiver only receiving the signals from the satellite. Uh, if it can receive uh, at least the four, uh, four satellite signals, it can calculate its own position and its, uh, its timing. So uh, with this, it can, theoretically speaking, you can have infinite numbers of users. Uh, so uh, from the Beidou 2 navigation system, because the signals have already covered the Asia-Pacific regions, from at that moment, we were already providing service to the users outside China. With this uh, Beidou 3 navigation system, we can provide s signals to uh, users all over the world. So it's the beginning of the, uh, that means China has already entered the club of providing the global navigation system. It has a global coverage now. But Andy, let me bring you into this. Beidou is China's first self-reliant, self-developed global system, and the project actually began decades ago in 1990s. Now it had been integrated in essential national infrastructure. The output value of China's satellite navigation system has seen an average growth of over 20 percent annually in the past decade. How would you evaluate Beidou's role in China's economy? Well, uh, Tiu Yuan, well, I you think see, that, that uh, Beidou's uh, impact on China's economy will be very profound, and I think this is a classic example of a military slash national security technology that uh, through technology diffusion has an enormous impact on an economy. So the internet is the classic example of this. But I think what makes this a little bit different is because of China's a unique ability to guide the implementation and commercialization of technology. Mm -hmm. So now that uh, Beidou 3 is available uh, worldwide, as uh, Professor Yang just mentioned, uh, it's important to build a commercial base. And here, China, through having taxis, new automobiles, smartphones in China, uh, utilize Beidou, that that's going to create a lot of data, it's going to create a lot of momentum. Uh, to make this uh, commercially successful. And then we add to that uh, the ability of this to be used by countries along the Belt and Road as well. So I think the uh, impact, uh, the economic impact of Beidou will be very, very uh, significant. Hmm. Now, Beidou 3 is the world's fourth global navigation satellite system following GPS, GLONASA, and Galileo. So, Dr. Bernard uh, Boeing, you're joining us on the phone there, but you said last year China was following its own motivations and would cooperate with other countries in space. Elaborate more on this, please. How can Beidou be used in tandem with the other system instead of simply just being seen as an alternative? 
Yes, yeah, so welcome uh, from Europe. So I'm partly in Europe, uh, partly on the moon as well, as I've been uh, working on the mission going to the moon. Some of them actually in collaboration with uh, China. And that's also an area where uh, really I wanted to say that uh, the country has uh, developed very much into uh, uh, developing new systems, infrastructure on the ground that uh, are benefiting uh, uh, not only the science, but also the large public and the large uh, uh, range of applications uh, for the future. So clearly, uh, global uh, navigation and positioning is a very important uh, asset uh, now in our world. And uh, uh, in Europe, we have been aware of that, and so we have a, a completed um, a system, a, a, a global navigation system called Galileo. We completed it in 2018 with uh, 24 operational uh, satellites, so you uh, all the time, and this is, gives us actually more ac accuracy than the GPS. Uh, so the GPS uh, gives three meter accuracy, and we can go to 20 centimeter uh, accuracy with the Galileo, and this is going to bring a lot of applications. Now we have uh, been uh, very careful to um, ensure compatibility of all these uh, global navigation uh, systems with uh, other systems that are available over the world also the Gronas and now the Bedou. And so for this, we have uh, really uh, to say that uh, uh, it's important that uh, a, a region develop their own infrastructure, but uh, what is also even more relevant is how you can develop services that will allow the various uh, citizens, the company, to benefit from this service. And for this, it's very important also to establish a market with a, a large number of receivers that are compatible with our Galileo system, uh, also with the Beidou, and that will take advantage of this ability to uh, position uh, uh, good, uh, and this has a lot of application in security, transport, fishing, uh, power management, forest, disaster, governance, uh, and also even uh, we have an application of emergency search and rescue, right. in addition to uh, some of the military defense applications. So uh, now I think uh, uh, congratulations to China for having their own operational system, and this will uh, benefit everybody by developing also a number of services and uh, commercial applications. All right, Andy, let me get your take also on what's being said here. The services the Beidou 3 can provide to global users because we understand prior to the completion of Beidou 3, uh, previous generation of Beidou had already been providing services to users in the Asia Pacific region since 2012, that is, and now it's expanding its service range. Uh, from your opinion, how could this benefit the world in a whole? Well, I think one, uh, two, and as you mentioned, that Beidou 3 has global coverage. So that means that the reach is global and not just regional. So I think that's uh, one very important advantage. Um, I think Professor Yang also touched on this as well. So uh, greater accuracy, and of course that allows uh, more sophisticated applications, ranging everything from transportation, agriculture, uh, even military. Uh, search and rescue, uh, all types of applications can be developed. And I think the other point that uh, this is a complementary technology as well because this generates a lot of data that can be used for artificial intelligence. It can be complementary with 5G as well. Mm -hmm. So I think we really can understand this as a suite of technologies, so a portfolio of technologies, even though Beidou in and of itself as a satellite navigation uh, technology is an important breakthrough, but I think the real value comes in the synergy. It is a breakthrough, but some media outlets are painting this breakthrough from China as some sort of race or space race, particularly with the United States. Professor Yang, let me get your thoughts on this. How are you looking at this, the so-called space race? Well, uh, for these navigation applications, I don't think there is a space race. You see, as our guests already mentioned, if we have more satellites, the users can get more accurate positioning. So the more system you have, the more users will benefit from it. So uh, from this aspect view, there will be no competition, uh, but just a cooperation. And also, uh, you see, uh, from the aspect of commercial applications, uh, applications they do have some com uh, competition. But this kind of competition are very good. I think I name it as a very good competition because it can bring more 
innovations and promoting of development of technologies. We can see a lot of these kind of uh, examples. Uh, for this Beidou navigation system, I think these kind of uh, examples can come from the downstream, downstream industry, which means that with more ap applications uh, being developed, we will have more uh, users and also we will can do more things with these kind of more accurate navigation services and positioning services. Andy, how are you looking at this? Because the Wolf Amendment in the United States that passed into law in 2011 says that NASA cannot directly work with China for the reason of national security. I mean, how has this affected areas where cooperation can be good? And can this law be withdrawn somehow if someone highlighted the goodness of the cooperation? Sorry, was you, were you asking me that, uh, Tuyan? Yeah, Andy. Okay, sure. So I think that on the one hand, there are two countervailing forces at work here. And actually, I think there are the three C's. Uh, there's conflict, there's, co -op, uh, there's competition, and there's cooperation. So clearly, we want to avoid conflict uh, in space. But there is healthy competition. And in one sense, we can look at in this, uh, the days of the Cold War, where the US and the Soviet Union were competing uh, in space. And there were healthy aspects to that because that made sure everyone was focused, uh, working hard to achieve a goal. So I think that uh, if healthy co op uh, competition uh, is promoted, uh, not just between countries, uh, but amongst the different stakeholders, because space is very interesting today that there are a number of private companies uh, also going into space. So I think as long as we're able to maintain a healthy competition and work together in a cooperative manner, uh, that everyone will benefit. And my hope is that people that have been in space say that it is a transcendental, ex transcendental experience where you realize that the conflicts amongst the people on Earth are really just very, very petty. And if we could rise above that and work together, uh, that that would be a good thing for all of mankind. So hopefully uh, space can have that very positive effect on everyone participating. And talking about that cooperation, uh, well, Dr. Foeng, uh, let, me, let me bring you into this. Has China worked with Europe's space agency in the past? How do you think China and Europe's space agency can cooperate in space in the future? Yes, indeed, I think we want to have a race, but uh, like an Olympic race, you know, where each country, each stakeholder, gives the best of themselves, and this can uh, foster spirit, innovation, and get the youth and everybody. And uh, in this race also, we want to cooperate. We want to share some of the benefits of uh, knowledge and also advancement of uh, the quality of life on our society. In this area, um, Europe also is working with all countries over the world, and I had the pleasure and the honor to collaborate uh, with uh, China in a number of uh, fields. For instance, we uh, collaborated in the area of uh, lunar exploration. I was in charge of our first uh, moon probe that uh, went uh, in 2003. It was called Smart One. And uh, at that time, we shared the data from our mission with our uh, Chinese colleagues. And then we started to collaborate on how we could uh, uh, provide support for the Chang'e 1, 2, 3 mission with our ground station on, uh, uh, in uh, Europe. And then we continued uh, with, uh, now we have a joint project, it's called uh, SMILE with the Chinese Academy of Science and the, and the Chinese Space Agency uh, to study the sun. We have also a great collaboration in the area of uh, training astronauts. So we hope at some stage we will have uh, uh, Chinese astronauts on, on the uh, space stations around, uh, on, around the Earth and even in the moon base. And uh, we have uh, sent some of our uh, astronauts to train together with the uh, Chinese astronauts. Uh, um, uh, and as well, we are conducting some uh, uh, simulation experience. For example, we go in uh, extreme places on Earth where we invite Chinese astronauts uh, to come and work with us. So we are looking very much in uh, uh, cooperating even further in the future. And uh, now that we see also a, a great program, for instance, in uh, um, lunar and planetary exploration in China and in human space flight is a lot of areas where we could uh, collaborate. Dr. Young, I, I see you nodding your head. What's your reaction to what's being said here? You, there was a point you wanted to make earlier? Yes, sure. Yeah, I have some additional information for you. It is very interesting because you see today our topic is Beidou navigation system. Well, you see uh, uh, 
Dr. Fu Ying and I are all members of the Moon Village Association. Uh, our organization, uh, the goal is to promote the cooperation between different countries. There is a very good example in the future because I have talked with my uh, Swiss, uh, Swiss friends uh, who are engaged in this kind of uh, navigation system applications in the future lunar explorations because you see landing on the moon is very difficult. Uh, one of the difficulty or the challenge comes from the positioning in the lunar space. So there is uh, one possible application of the navigation system is to use the signals of the navigation satellites from the uh, near Earth space uh, to provide signals to the uh, spacecraft near the moon. But the problem is that because all the satellites, uh, uh, navigation satellites, uh, have its uh, beams, the radio beams, towards the Earth. So uh, usually it is very difficult for the spacecraft with the attitude higher and the navigation system uh, to receive these signals. If you have uh, the system combined by uh, GPS, GLONASS, uh, Beidou, and Galileo, you will have more possibility and more mm -hmm. chances for the spacecraft near the moon to receive these kind of signals. So this is a very hopeful field in the future. Absolutely, it's an international cooperation, and absolutely, it is a very good uh, application of these uh, uh, navigation system all over these countries. Absolutely. But I got to mention the Space Force. You know, the United States has created this Space Force where Secretary of State, uh, State Mike Pompeo said in a speech this month that was created as a direct challenge to China in space. I mean, Andy, how are you looking at this, the rhetoric, the fact, I mean, will U.S. try to stop its allies and other countries from working with China? No, I think that the uh, experience of the last couple of years clearly shows that uh, the U.S. views China as uh, a threat and perhaps even an existential threat. And the main battlefield will be uh, technology. So we've seen this with Huawei, uh, ZTE. Uh, now we could even perhaps put TikTok uh, in this category. Um, and, of course, space is seen as very strategic because uh, it's not just uh, the final frontier and there's so much, uh, you know, an infinite uh, amount of uh, stuff out there. But also to control space in terms of satellites, communication uh, on Earth. And we see how critical uh, that is uh, from a military perspective. So I think this is, it's unfortunate that on the one hand, uh, again, you know, people that have been to space see it from a perspective and realize that many of these conflicts uh, on planet Earth are in some sense very, very petty. And I think there is a, a desire to rise above that. And yet we still have to deal with these day-to-day -day, uh, political conflicts and misunderstandings. And Chilion, I think you're absolutely right that this will be one of the themes uh, that will recur as mankind moves into space. Uh, the U.S. as uh, the leading or now one of the leading space powers and China being another, but the U.S. seeing China as uh, a major threat and needing to do something about it. So again, I think it's unfortunate, but it is the reality. Yeah. I mean, a lot of people are watching this story very closely, so let's now take a look at some of the views or comments we're getting from our viewers. They're from Facebook, Twitter, and Weibo. Um, and here is one from Weibo. It says, with the Beidou 3 navigation satellite system, the extensive coverage of 5G across China, and the construction of CORS, Beidou plus 5G can be more widely applied with intelligence that could generate a practical market of greater than 10 billion RMB. The combination of Beidou and 5G can advance the development of the networking of cars, auto drive, smart city, and the Internet of Things with high accuracy navigation. Um, Dr. Guo Jing is joining us now live. So, Dr. Guo, let me get your reaction to what our viewer has just said. I mean, economic value is one thing. This Beidou 3 system, they can, this is something that can potentially revolutionize our, the way we live. I think, uh, sorry. Uh, I think the Beidou uh, has, uh, the most important thing the Beidou has been pro uh, provided to us is that it can be provided the time and uh, the uh, space uh, reference. 
So with this, that, uh, uh, this can be used by the others as you have inside uh, by, by other applications so that can be changed in our the daily lives. So for most of this, and recently, uh, the video has been integrated with, with, with a lot of things uh, such as it has been used by massive uh, intelligence device so it can uh, provide uh, accuracy, uh, positioning and, and, and other things. And Dr. Guo, based on your work with the GNSS Research Center there in Wuhan, what was the breakthrough moment in getting the Beidou system up and running? I mean, how complicated was it working on the system? Uh, I think uh, there are too much more breakthroughs for the success of Beidou. Uh, personally, I think the two out of them, which we call the inter-satellite link technology and the high accuracy autumn clocks, are the greatest, uh, greatest achievement. So for the uh, yes, for the international link, uh, a satellite link is a technology for communication between the satellites. With these technologies, we can uh, uh, for the Beidou, it can implement of the uh, global uh, 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 short message and also an international uh, a rescue and a, a search uh, service. And also with uh, uh, inter-satellite inter link technology. So Beidou can provide the uh, autonomous uh, 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 survive without uh, any uh, uh, ground uh, monitoring uh, and also the communication facilities. So it uh, it means it it can be worked for quite a long of times uh, without any other ground facilities. So for the high uh, high accuracy at uh, atomic clock, it's a uh, part of the. Uh, uh, GNS satellites because it uh, uh, provided an accuracy uh, 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 frequency standard for generation of signals and uh, time uh, stamps. So uh, that, that's a core of the GNS satellites. And uh, all of this uh, equipment has been made by China uh, self, so that's a great achievement. Andy, let me get your take on the what's been said earlier by our viewers, the Spado plus 5G mode. I mean, what kind of market potential are you seeing here? Well, I think the market potential is enormous, uh, Chiu Yen. So, you know, one of the things to point out here, too, is that this will is starting a virtuous cycle. So where Beidou, of course, allows much better uh, satellite navigation and all that that can bring. Again, you know, from agriculture, search and rescue, military, transportation, smart cities, etc. But by working with 5G and artificial intelligence, uh, many people say that data is the new oil. So what this will do will create uh, enormous new data sets. And then, of course, uh, artificial intelligence algorithms can work on those. Uh, to further improve uh, performance, but also develop entirely new products and services. So I think the uh, ec exactly right uh, as the uh, as as one of our audience members uh, shared. I think the economic potential uh, is large, and we're still discovering. We're still in the early days of discovering just exactly what all these new applications will be. So talk to us more about the application of the global navigation system. Dr. Guozing, you've worked on it. You're an expert of it. Tell us more about what kind of impact of, on lives we can feel. Uh, so uh, for my opinion, I think uh, that's uh, because of what the Beidou has uh, provided, at least in China, that can be provided much more of a service. Uh, for, for, for others, such as it can be provided uh, the, the space uh, based uh, 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 the, 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 the space argument, uh, the set argument service, and also the ground argument service, so that it can be provided much more uh, high accurate service. So with uh, for us in China, uh, for us, so with uh, with, with some uh, uh, some receiver which can uh, support the Beidou tracking can pro, uh, can obtain uh, the quite. Uh, quite high accuracy uh, uh, positioning. So, uh, and and I think it it has already been implemented in, in, in the mobile phone. So uh, anything uh, uh, can be uh, uh, can be implement, uh, can be implemented 
may be that quite beyond our imaginations. So Beidou can be do much more than, than what, what uh, have, we, we can obtain. But Dr. Gozi, how do you see the significance of today's launch? Mm. I think uh, it, it, it's just a, a, mm, it's, it's, it's a monument of, of the Beidou uh, systems. Uh, today, uh, uh, it has been announced to provide the, uh, the optional uh, PNT service. But uh, for, uh, for, for Beidou, we have much more to do uh, later, uh, such as uh, in, in, in a few of years, uh, China has also uh, promote uh, uh, something else technique uh, uh, program pro or project to to make a uh, uh, videos better and uh, and uh, and uh, 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 provide some project to 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 make a video to applicate in uh, to to applicate in our uh, daily lives. Mm -hmm. So uh, for today, video is ready for use, but the next we are ready. Uh, we now to seek a better ways to to use uh, uh, the Beidou much more better. Certainly in a very important milestone in China's space program, a very exciting development. Thank you very much for your perspectives. Dr. Guo Jing joining us there from Wuhan and Andy joining us here in downtown Beijing and earlier Mr. Yang Yuguan joining us and also uh, Dr. Fo Wing joining us on the phone. That's going to do it for this edition of Dialogue. For more coverage of breaking news, development stories, please follow CGTN on your favorite social media platforms. I'm Li Xuan in Beijing. On behalf of the whole team here, thank you so much for your company. We'll see you at the same time tomorrow. Bye for now.